Hey, we're Anna Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to share some tips for going into a hard conversation with your spouse. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe that Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us in this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. Uh, we love you all. We thank you that you join us faithfully every week. And we hope you've been enjoying all the content. And uh, we wanted to invite you to take the Marriage Prayer Challenge with everyone. Uh, it's a new thing that we've launched and you go to marriageprayerchallenge.com to register. And what it is, is you get invited to receive an email every day for the next 31 days, giving you prompts every day to pray for your spouse. And it's, the reason it's a challenge is because we wanted to make a fun thing to see if we could be praying for our spouses every day and hopefully build a habit out of it. Our heart is to encourage marriages all over the world to be praying regularly, daily for their spouse, because we, my wife and I, believe that prayer changes everything. Um, it's our way that we communicate with God. And uh, there's nothing more powerful than bringing your spouse before your Heavenly Father in prayer. And so would you take the Marriage Prayer Challenge today? Go to marriageprayerchallenge.com and register. <laughs> Funny, babe. Okay, so uh, listen, talking to your spouse specifically about hard conversations, it's going to come up. It's probably already come up. Uh, it's going to come up a million times. <laughs> yeah, it's just what we do as a married couple. So we want to prepare you guys. We want to equip you. We want to remind you uh, about what it looks like to go into a hard conversation prepared and why that's important. Uh, and so today, for today's episode, we wanted to give you some tips and just talk about what that looks like. And then if you're li listening to this with your spouse, you guys can look at each other and be like, do we have stuff to talk about? <laughs> you might. Don't go starting anything. Um, so what are the kinds of, <laughs> just to give some examples, what are the kinds of hard conversations that they might be getting into? Okay, I'm just going to go deep right now, confronting sin. It's like one of the That's an easy top, one. I know, it's the top. It's the number one. That's like one. an easy one. Um, but That's it's a, important. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm kidding, it's not easy. But confronting sin, And now this could be sin, you confronting your own sin and then having confessing to con sin. confess it. Yeah. Or it could be, hey, I see this in you and we need to talk about it. So mm -hmm. it could go both ways. Uh, so the next one would be parenting differences. I know that this is a hard one. We've gone through this. Um, and it, every child, it seems like at the different stages, it comes up. I was going to say in the beginning, you just there's certain things that you probably just don't think about. There might be general things that you think about and talk about before even having kids. But then mm -hmm. when you have kids, you're kind of uh, confronted by the experience of having kids. And so you want to be on the same page. Um, and yeah, and like you said, with, be with each stage of growth that the kids experience, you're experiencing as a parent. So mm -hmm. we'll just say parenting issues. Yeah. Um, In-law relationship conflict. This is a big one. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one any, spouse any maybe family. has an unhealthy relationship with their in-laws. Yeah or with their parents, maybe um, one spouse, uh, you know, is angry or there, there's something going on yeah. um, and, the, and the boundaries that need to be set. We've, we have an episode about boundaries with in-laws mm -hmm. um, and just setting those boundaries is a difficult thing because um, you might be coming to your spouse and they might be very sensitive about it. It might be something that it's like a new concept to them. Yeah. Um, and so that, that, I mean, that's a big one. I'm going to tack onto that family relationships because family as relationships, important yeah. in-law, as important as it is to talk about in-laws, I think sometimes things come up with sisters or brothers or, or, or yeah. it could be anyone. So um, family relationship conflict. Um, another one would be big decisions to be made. So big things, house, big things are on the table. House, yep. Adoption, I mean, moving. Uh, fill in the blank. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you're probably thinking right now, all of the decisions that you, you're like, oh, this is, they're all big. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it feels that way and you need to yeah. talk about it. Um, and then this one kind of, 
connect, connects to sin, the sin confronting one a little bit, but it's also different areas of growth or change, maturity. Yeah, maturity. Just things that we need to grow in. Like, um, and a lot, it happens a lot more in early years of marriage, but mm-hmm. it happens over time. Like the way we communicate, yeah. uh, my attitude towards certain things, the, the, the way we look at certain things mm-hmm. and, um, and think about certain things and the way we talk about certain things, those can be hard things. I'm going to do a little subcategory here just to give some, some context. You know, sometimes, <laughs> not to make light of it, but when you get married, you're, you're learning each other and there's going to be things that we do that bother each other or annoy each other or (laughs) just really crawl up our skin. So uh, I think it's important to talk about those things, not to point the finger and say, can I I say one of them? You're terrible. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, (laughs) Maybe you'll forget if I stop you. Uh, Not to say you're, you're a terrible person, but to, to consider what it means to actually go into a conversation like that. Um, But in the hopes of maybe experiencing some, some growth or change. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I'm not going to point out one. Okay. You're just being mean. <laughs> this will be, a, that'll be another episode. All of the things that bother us about our spouse. Oh man. Can you write that down? That's a great idea. I'm not doing that. Okay. So we have had our share of hard conversations over the years. I think we've um, had all of them. There's no more, right? <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> that was a legit laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we're going to have a lot more. That's the point. Uh, and they're, they're going to come up, but we want to be better at it. Yeah. Um, and so let's talk about the wrong way first for everyone that's <laughs> listening. Cause there's, there's a, there's many ways to approach these hard sure. conversations. I would say more often than not, we have done it the wrong way. But that's all learning experience, right? Like it's that. Yeah, exactly. We're in school for <laughs> ma- marriage school. Um, but you gotta be married to go through it. Uh, so the wrong way I would, and we're going to list off a few things. Uh, so kind if you want to explain take, them as we go. So if you want to take notes, don't do it. If you're driving, um, you can go back to this later, but or vacuuming or cleaning or yeah, any of the things yeah, you're you busy can, with. No, if, well, if you're at home, you should stop what you're doing and take notes. Here, mental notes. Ready? Yeah. Go. Okay. Number so, one. <laughs> uh, going into a, a hard conversation, emotionally charged mm. is not a good way to what start. What does that even look like? I've never, never so done like, it before. <laughs> yeah. You're so emotionally even killed. And it's like, it, every single time we go into the conversation, mm. it's like neutral. Uh, What's emotionally funny about charged. that is even when I try really hard not to be emotionally charged, you're emotionally somewhere charged. along the lines, I get it. Uh, okay, let's, yeah. let's explain. Uh, this one's a hard one. It takes self-control. It takes walking in the spirit. Um, but emotionally charged, if you're going into a conversation emotionally charged, as in you're already really angry mm-hmm. and you haven't even cooled down yet and you just start off at level 10. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like something happens and you yeah. snap and you just respond. It's like reactionary. Yeah. It's not thoughtful. It's not self-controlled. Yeah. It's not self-controlled. So another thing that I, oh, go ahead. no, you go. I was just going to say another thing that, you know, I think of when you say emotionally charged is, um, for those that stuff down issues, the stuffers, the stuffers, and they don't, they're not willing to address what's bothering them. So then, you know, down the line, something else frustrates them, or maybe that thing that frustrates them happens again, and then they just respond. And so they're emotionally charged already because they haven't dealt with it. Yeah. What they do is they, they save up all the emotions. And then it's like ammunition. This is a little, a little side note. Yeah. This is a good tip for those that stuff the emotions instead of actually dealing with them um, in prayer, in wisdom, in counsel, in Talking, talking about it, <laughs> uh, you're not actually dealing with it. Dealing, you're not fixing anything. What mm-hmm. you're doing is you're um, thinking about it this way. You're storing it up mm-hmm. to spew it out later. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is, and this we've seen this, we do mm-hmm. this, we have done this. Um, it's stored, and then the moment you have the opportunity to pour it out, you do. Yeah. So that one thing, and you want to talk about this one thing, and what comes out of you is a list of everything. Mm-hmm. All of the things that you've been, you're like, and this, and you made me mad when you did this. And yeah. and then you hurt my feelings when you did this. Okay, I'm going to be real honest here and just admit that there have been times where I say I'm brushing it off. Like, I'm not going to let that thing bother me. But instead of letting me brush it off, I stuff it. And so we need to be careful that we're not justifying well, I don't know if there's what we're doing. really anything, any such thing as brushing it off. Either you come to the conclusion of, I'm not going to be mad about that. Yeah, I'm not offended. I'm not going to be offended. And Lord, if I am, I want you to help me not be offended. And meaning I'm not going to bring this up again. Mm-hmm. Brushing it off is just another way of saying I've stuffed it. Mm. I'm saving it for later. Okay. Um, but you don't do that as much as you used to. Yeah. That used to be a, a tactic that happened in our marriage a lot. 
I think it's a lot better nowadays. She's you laughing. You say tactic like I was trained in that way. I you were trained in that I way. I, wasn't, it's I a, didn't mean These to are things it. that we learn as we, as we grow. We, we all learn how to deal with emotions in different ways. I've matured. And little. you know what? We all get to change also yeah. and grow. I, I mean, I, how, you know me. I have, mm-hmm. I, I'm usually pretty even. But when it comes to feeling wronged, feeling manipulated, mm-hmm. um, being angry, mm-hmm. I usually, or not usually, but I, I could just let it all out. And I have no self-control. And so you're not the only one in this in the story all right, here. All right. Another one, uh, another, so that was number one is emotionally charged. We're still talking about the wrong ways though. This is the wrong way into to go into a hard conversation. Yeah. Number two is with generalities. Mm. Um, you always, you never, mm-hmm. you know, I hate those. Well, but we do them all the time. Uh, no, when you say we don't do See, it all the time. All the time. Okay. Yeah. You just did it. But listen, <laughs> <laughs> we have grown in this a lot. So and a better word is, we have often in the past we have often. used generalities. Okay, but seriously, this was one that really got to both of us. Yeah. Well, and it still comes out, but we catch it. We're like, but no, why? don't generalize. But why? <laughs> because it's it's not right. There's no recognition of growth or what's actually taking place. And, it, and it's false. Just uh, even So even if there is some truth to it, it still falls. And what it does is it discounts everything, like yeah. you just said. Right. Um, and it also... Uh, paints the, the other person in just only black or only white yeah. rather than grace and mercy right. and forgiveness. Yeah. It's a short way of of sharing the list. You know, the list of all the things that... Yeah, it's, are, it's like a quick uh, and dirty, like, nope, see, th- yeah. there you go again. You always do that. Mm-hmm. We got to stop. Yeah. When I say we, I'm saying collectively. We as in you and everyone else. Because I don't... <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Okay. You never. <clears throat> I never. I never use generalities. Okay. Uh, number three, three. A bad way, a wrong way to go into a hard conversation. Is viewing your spouse as the enemy rather than... So, yeah, going in on opposite okay. sides. Yeah. Which is hard because oftentimes the disagreement is... Th- that's the definition. We're on different sides. What do you do if you feel like you know that your spouse isn't the enemy, but you feel like they're being the enemy. Like you feel like they are on a different side. Well, that's in the, when we talk about the biblical way to do it, Mm. we have to get to that point first. The wrong way is going in viewing as the enemy. And this is something that we've talked about me reminding you, like I'm not the enemy or you, you, or vice versa. You saying we're, we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a, a tactic to diffuse that feeling. But if we're going in just in our mind, no, we're different. There's no reconciliation. She's wrong. She needs to change everything she's done. I'm the I'm the right one in this conversation. Like I'm yeah. already just in the wrong position, right? Which goes to number four, which is having a personal agenda or wrong motives. Mm. I'm going in specifically for an outcome that I want, mm-hmm. and I'm going to either feel better, mm-hmm. as in I got you good, and now you hurt how I hurt. That's something that we dealt with mm-hmm. in the beginning of our marriage. When you felt I hurt you, you would react and respond in a way to make sure that I not only knew that you were hurt, but you wanted me to hurt also. Mm-hmm. So well, I thought it would teach you a lesson. Yeah. I right. And so the motive is understand. I'm going to, if I don't do this, he won't change the way I want him to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've done that as well in different ways, but that, that, that motive or that agenda of, no, they are going to change the way I want them to change. They are going to think the way I want them to think. They're going to see what I want them to see. Mm-hmm. And just as a side note, like we'll probably talk about this in the more biblical way to approach a hard conversation. But when you are going in with a, a personal agenda like that, are you submitting your will and your desire to the Lord and desiring mm. what He wants to come of this? No, God's going to step back and I'll let you know how this is going to go, God. <laughs> that, that's how sometimes That's a dangerous our, place to be. That our hearts can be. Okay, number five. Mm. Not specific or focused. So going into a conversation and it starts off with, I want to talk to you about how you communicated today. To and me. then 30 seconds into it, there's all these other things that you've thrown out and mixed up. To, and- to win the co- conversation or to, to paint this, again, this picture of how much you're the enemy and how you always do this okay, and but how you never do that. And- the, the spouse who's listening or the, the spouse that has been um, invited into this conversation at this point also needs to be aware that if some if your spouse brings something to the table, their response matters, right? So if then they go on a rant about all these other things, they can contribute to this mixing up of a mm-hmm. bunch of issues. When you, it's hard to deal with something, especially a hard a hard issue, mm-hmm. if it's clouded. Yeah. So so just kind of being clear on, on and we're trying to communicate about this thing mm-hmm. now that it might include other things. Mm-hmm. 
but not using it as an opportunity right. to just throw all the you know the baby, the the baby with the bathwater. Yeah, like mm-hmm. let's just talk about all of it because um, that's not going to work with anything. Um, here's a, another one. If you're going into the conversation to be right, just to be right, like you don't even care what the issue is. You just want to be right because you want to be on top. You want to be mm-hmm. the one that's wise and yeah. I don't care how I get there. I just want to end out right, mm-hmm. and that's my that's been my problem. Uh, regardless of feelings, regardless of solutions, regardless of um, my character, our, our, our you know our reconciliation, regardless of all those things, mm-hmm. no, I'm not giving up because I'm right. Now that makes the conversation feel really hard because it, it literally feels like you're sharing something with a brick wall, and which, which is, is what also, it is because I'm right. It's it's, it's pride. <laughs> it's pride, which is pride. number seven, going in um, and being hard, not not. Um, with a listening ear, not hum- he- with not humility. Humble. Yeah, you're, no, you're, it's just pride. So a lot of these are tied together. Of yeah, course, yeah. they're very sinful, fleshly yeah. <laughs> things. Um, we should have started with that. Yeah, don't go in selfishly. Uh, number eight. Um, oh, timing. I, yeah. So <laughs> should like the best time to like confess sin is like to you is like right before we're about to go on a date, right? No. Well, or go if it a- needs to be <laughs> talked about, and that's what the date is for, I would say okay. Or like, but. What? There, I just I'm just thinking about this this the times that like <laughs> I've the, done this or you've just, done this. There's just times where it's not uh, conducive to have a hard conversation. Maybe your kids are right there and you just brought something up that they shouldn't be hearing or right. they're not a, age appropriate for. So being mindful of like, okay, this has happened before where we're like headed into an event, like let's say a wedding, and right before we get out of the car there's this conversation that's brought up and it's like, I can't walk in there right now. I, I can't feel this <laughs> yeah. way. So being a, paying attention to timing, another one when we were talking about timing is I was thinking, you know, before an intimate experience. So if you know that, mm-hmm. I'm just going to use my own experience because I'm sure I've done this before where I know you want to be intimate with me and you're desiring that. Yeah. And then I sabotage it by bringing up this emotionally charged, hard conversation instead right. of it, enjoying your... <laughs> and I would say... I, I, on most things, um, like t- yeah, and I've done this before, right before wanting to be intimate with you, bringing up a parenting thing. Yeah. Hey, what about this thing? And it really just about? ruined the whole night because yeah. we're like, it was I something that we were, on my pillow and I was like, we're I like broken over what? and we're like frustrated with and like just turn in. And I don't even know why I did it, but it, I mean, it was a good thing to talk about. It just probably wasn't the right time to talk about it. Mm. I would say though, um, not avoiding confessing sin mm. because, man, like being intimate with you and one with you and, and having those experiences with you is about being pure and intimate Mm -hmm. and our unity. And if I'm not in unity, I think that the appropriate thing is to confess it rather than avoid it just so I can get that. Right. So I would say, yeah, discern, discern what it is. That is the hard conversation because if it's something that could be left for another time and you can still be one and and share in that purity and share in that uh, intimate intimacy, then wait, wait and be okay with yep. waiting and don't let it bother you so <clears throat> much that it just, you know, gets in the way or sabotages your evening or morning or whenever that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so going back to, you mentioned this before, but another thing is just being aware of our responses. Um, Both if, parties are responsible. Yeah. We, we can respond with wrong motives, wrong attitudes, yeah. pride, and that's going to just fuel mm-hmm. a hard conversation or make a, a hard conversation harder. Now here's the catch, okay? As humans, we tend to reciprocate how someone approaches us or re- or reacts mm-hmm. toward us. And so the natural fleshly response when someone comes at us, say emotionally charged, is to respond emotionally charged. But as a Christian, we're called to be self-controlled. We're called to uh, be mindful of our words and all of it. And so, yes, our responses matter. And what that means is we're responsible. So even if, even if our spouse enters a hard conversation the wrong way, we're still called to be, be responsible. Do it our way. To do the it the right, right way. way. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, and it, some of these will sound like we're repeating, but because it's the opposite of what we just talked about. Yeah. Let's talk about some tactics for going into a successful hard conversation. <laughs> Things we've learned over time. Yeah. Um, we talked about timing a little bit. Timing is, is kind. Mm. is being aware, you know, so, so timing it right is, is being considerate. So like, let's say, you know, you're having a really hard day emotionally with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. 
it would be unkind and un- inconsiderate of me to come to you in that moment and mm-hmm. say, Hey, this is, I, I've been wanting to talk to you about mm-hmm. how you discipline the kids. And you're like, already have had a hard day, emotional, broken. That is not a considerate time to bring that up. That's not me discerning you. That's not me, me walking with you in an understanding way, as the word tells me to do. So considering like, hey, like, is my wife in a place that we can effectively have this conversation and she can hear it and absorb it and that we could communicate about it together in a right way? That's good. Being the person that knows what is going to be on the table and what you want to talk mm-hmm. about, being considerate of the other person's right. heart and where they're at. I would say another one is being mindful of the time it takes to share words because yeah. you're going to share a bunch of words. They're going to respond and that just takes time. So if you're in a car ride headed to someone's wedding or a family reunion or, or family anywhere. dinner, yeah. wherever you're going, don't ask the question or bring up the topic 30 seconds getting out of the car because that's not going to sit well with your spouse. Yeah, and then you're just sitting there staring like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Are and then into, yeah. they're charged so, so, so be discerning enough to, to be patient if yeah. you have to, and to, to find the right time, maybe even say, find a time to let your spouse know, Hey, I have a hard conversation that we need to talk about. Can we make some time mm-hmm. tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And just so you know, I'm not mad or anything. It's about this. And I think we, yeah. sh- I think it's something we should talk about, but don't worry about it now. We'll talk about it then. And just kind of pre- prepping your okay. spouse's heart. Um, I would say along this, uh, line of timing, um, not to tell yourself that you're going to wait for the right time just to avoid it. Which uh, we do. Just to neglect. And the reason why I think that's important is because you're just stuffing. You're you're still Mm -hmm. bothered by the issue. You're just avoiding talking about it. And so don't let so much time go that it eats at you. Yeah, and I think of the scripture that uh, tells us when you have an offense against a brother to to go immediately to them in private. Mm -hmm. Again, which is a timing thing. Like, are you in a place that is conducive to that. Yeah. Is that is a it, safe zone for you to talk about? Yeah. Or, you know, is their phones on, but, mm. but going immediately, um, if, w- w- as soon as you can yeah, in an appropriate way and, and not want- just pushing stuff on and saying, you know, like you said, stuffing right. and just saying, I'm not going to deal with it now. And you want to resolve it because you desire reconciliation, which gets to what we're going to be talking about later okay. is our purpose. What's, okay. a, what's number two. Another way is, uh, pray about it. Pray, pray about the words that you want to say, pray about, how your spouse receives it or how they respond. You know, I think about Esther in the Bible and how she fasted and prayed for the thing that she felt was so necessary and to be Mm -hmm. able to address her husband in the matter. Yeah. And I, I, I just think that it's so important that we're praying about these things and we're submitting, I mentioned it earlier, submitting our will and what we desire the outcome to be to God and saying, God, am I even right in this? (laughs) Yeah, it's a good question uh, to ask God actually. And I was, I was just thinking like, if, if, the listening, if the listeners took one thing away, if, if we just practiced praying about something before do we that spoke about it, challenge. <laughs> yeah, go do that prayer challenge we just talked about. Um, but if we prayed about it before we spoke about it, I'm, I wonder how many conversations wouldn't have to happen. Because or how many conflicts would be dissolved before right. you know, just being able to talk about it? Well, because if you think about it, we, we don't cha- we can't change anyone's hearts. I can't change your heart, babe, on on, a, on an issue. I can present something to you, and you know what? The Holy Spirit's going to be have to the one have to be the one changing your heart. Mm-hmm. So prayer is essential in the fact that I'm literally asking God, hey, would you change my my heart and my wife's heart? Mm-hmm. Would you reveal to her? Would you soften her? Because I want her to receive. I want her to hear. I want us to be on the same page. It also preps our hearts to be in the right place mm-hmm. for our spouse. There's actually, I'm thinking of a, a situation where you had been praying for me of something that didn't sit right with you. And a couple of days later, I came to you and confessed, hey, I've been feeling this certain way and I've been doing this thing. And, and I I've just, literally been praying for that thing for like and three I, days And straight. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. And looking back on the situation, had you confronted me on it, I don't know if I would have. You probably wouldn't have seen it maybe. Seen it right away. Or been know. defensive possibly. I don't know. But anyways. Oh, we don't know. We didn't have to do it. <laughs> that's just one example of how God can move and he wants to and he will. Um, but when we submit ourselves to him in prayer, mm-hmm. oh, it's powerful for marriage. Powerful. So yeah, be praying so, for each other. Number three, uh, and we kind of touched on it on, from number one on the timing, um, but it's make plans for undistracted time to talk. This like, takes intentionality. Yeah, knowing that, hey, this is going to take time to to discuss, to fully flesh out, to 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 listen, mm-hmm. and so we need that time. We need, and we don't want the kids around, or we maybe we don't want friends date, around, or we maybe you take a date night to do it, yeah. or maybe you wait until everyone goes to bed. We have the phones off. We don't yeah. have something looming over our, our heads, a, a project mm-hmm. or or work or whatever. Um, 
we 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 make sure that we've set aside that time mm-hmm. specifically to to have that conversation. So another thing I want to another way that I want to mention, um, and I don't know if we've done this necessarily, but I have a good friend who has done something similar, and I think it's helpful for people who kind of get lost in their words and mm-hmm. and you know um, lose their train of thought. But it's taking notes. So if you have something on your heart that you want to talk to your spouse about, make some bullet points, make a little list. Not that you're going in. Um, to like, here's my list of yeah, demands or my, yeah, I just want to clarify this. This is not to, this is notes to help facilitate your thoughts to your spouse exactly. about what you're trying to get across. Exactly. So that if you start fumbling in your words, you can go back to your, your notes and just say, this is what I wanted to say. Um, and so I think that, I think it's important to, 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 mm-hmm. So it, it, sure. this one might not be for everyone, but I think taking notes could be a, um, again, it's not to be right or win. It's to help you communicate well yeah. to your spouse. Um, number five, again, it's the opposite of the other, one of the wrong ways is be specific and avoid generalities. So the wrong way is using generalities, but avoid them. Like they're, they're never fruitful. Mm-hmm. You, saying always and never and using these, these um, like global terms, <laughs> they, well, they don't mean anything also because they're not, they can't possibly be true. Um, because then that person needs to go down and evaluate whether or not yeah. they've done that. So there's, there's, I don't think there's ever, ever, <laughs> I think this is the only generality <laughs> I could use. There's ever a reason to use generalities. Uh they're just hurtful Mm -hmm. and it just literally paints them like you're never going to change. You can't change. This is how I see you. You are this person. And that's not a fruitful way to talk to anyone. And then being specific goes to what we talked about of don't use the opportunity to just throw everything at your spouse. That's kind of vaguely connected to Mm -hmm. the topic you're bringing up, but just talk about the thing and get it resolved. Mm -hmm. So um, another way we want to share with you guys. This is the biggest one. <laughs> this is to combat that prideful, hard um, heart that wants to be right. And it's know your end result. Your end result is always reconciliation. And unity. It's unity. It's oneness. It's love. It's it caring hurts. about the yeah. other person more than yourself. It's caring about our unity and our marriage and the ministry God's given us more than being right, Mm -hmm. more than feeling justified, more than making sure you know exactly how I feel right now, because Mm -hmm. um, now some of those could be valid. Mm -hmm. Um, And if we communicate well and we have the right end result, then we can communicate well and say, you know, you did make me feel this way. And I, and I, I, I really would hope you would change in this area because it, it makes us stronger when you are that when you mm. don't do that. And it makes, and it, and it helps me feel um, close to you and mm. those kinds of things. But the goal should always be reconciliation. Yeah. If your motive is reconciliation, one, you're going to go into the conversation with a soft spirit because you, your goal is peace, right? You, your, your goal is not unity. To be right. Yeah. And so you're not going to be on the defense. You're going to be, or on the offense, you're just going in going, Hey, our marriage matters. God matters. Let's figure this out. And then if your goal is reconciliation and you're coming in, in that way, the other person's going to have a chance to respond. And are you going to be available to listen? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be walking in humility to say that, or to be in a place where if your spouse has a response that actually corresponds to um, how they're being because of you. So like, let's say you're doing something that's bothering me. I'm going to talk to you about it and you point it back at me. I'm able to look at it and go, oh, I didn't see that. Okay, let's talk about this, right? Because the yeah. goal is reconciliation. It's not, I'm bringing this to you and then I'm cut off from the rest of the conversation. Yeah. It's reconciliation. And that should be our goal because to be honest, um, we need to remember none of us are righteous in our own, right? Mm-hmm. None of us deserve the goodness that God has given us. That So and if we have that perspective, there's nothing my wife could ever do that's more sinful or wrong toward me than my sin had did toward Christ. Mm-hmm. So the salvation I have, the forgiveness I have is unearned, unmerited, and it's a gift from God. Mm-hmm. And because of that, that should lead me to a place of saying, well, man, I, I should be able to forgive my spouse for anything. Yeah. Like literally there's nothing she could do against me that is worse and more deserving of hell than what I've done to God Mm -hmm. on any level. So that, and that, again, that goes back to why the Bible wants us in walking in unity and forgiveness because none of us deserve the forgiveness we do have. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, out of that love, out of that recognition, I could say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to lay down all my weapons because my wife is just like me and we all deserve one thing and you've given us another. And so I'm going to give her what you've given me. Uh, so reconciliation. Okay. So here's a question. Um, if, if a husband or a wife has something on their hearts that they feel that they need to talk about to the, to their spouse, something that they need reconciliation on, would you say that they should first talk it through with a friend or get counsel or what does that look like? Cause I know people are going to have that question and I don't want to, I know. And it really depends on what the context is. Mm -hmm. And so I I don't want to give a generality (laughs) like, yes, you should always get counsel. Some things like you just go to your spouse and you, you do it. Um, But other things, maybe you have a spouse that's not in the same place spiritually as you and you, and maybe you can't address certain things. Uh, Again, I'd say the first place is you begin praying for Mm -hmm. that person, your spouse over and over and over again, every day, all the time and watching the Lord work in their life. Um, but I, I think there are definitely situations that someone should get counsel um, on how to deal with something. And so I don't, again, I, I think the people listening should discern that. But the, if your heart is to go just paint your husband or your wife in a picture towards others so that people are on your side versus them, if you're just trying to gain um, people on your team against your spouse, mm-hmm. you're wrong. Yeah. But if you're going genuinely be like, I don't know what to do, mm-hmm. I, I need help. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should. Maybe you should go get godly counsel. People that you trust, who have marriages that you look up to, who love God, who love the word of God, and and get some godly counsel for the purpose of reconciliation, mm-hmm. for the purpose of growth, maturity, closer closeness to Christ. Um, so I would say each person needs to discern that and, mm-hmm. and at, search their own hearts and say, am I doing this because I just want to make my spouse look bad mm. and win the argument or have people on my side. And maybe that's not your goal, but can consider your words and what you're sharing with people because that could be happening. Without you intending it to, yeah. but in your heart. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. So uh, we just wanted to encourage you guys with this conversation today because hard conversations come up in marriage. They happen and uh, maybe they've happened in the past and you regret some of the things that you've said or did, um, or maybe they're going to come up in the future and now you feel more equipped going into it. Um, that was our heart with today's episode. And um, and I just want to share that having grown through the way that we communicate, Aaron, I I feel like, you know, utilizing these biblical steps of, of uh, praying beforehand, of going in with the heart of reconciliation, it actually has helped us communicate clearer and quicker in mm-hmm. that when hard conversations come up, we are able to find a solution or, or be reconciled mm-hmm. um, in, in situations where maybe in the beginning of our marriage took a lot longer. Yeah. And also um, let go of things quicker. Yeah. Like actually release like, oh, that, you know, I don't even need to be angry about that. There's no reason to. Yeah. Um, so as we practice maturity and walk in maturity, it really does benefit the marriage. Yeah. And it allows God to move through us in a way that is humble and beautiful and uh, for the purpose of oneness. And so uh, we just, we're, we're, we were excited to share this with you guys. And uh, as always, we would like to pray with you before we head out. So please join us. Dear Lord, thank you for the intimacy of marriage. Marriage can be messy and challenging at times, but it is such an incredible place for deep love to exist. Please help us to be transparent in marriage. Help us to walk in light as well as grace. Lord, please help us to confront the issues that need to be confronted and to say the hard things, but in love. We pray we would be courageous and humble, willing to make time for each other, to share and to listen. We pray we would have hearts that truly desire reconciliation. May you go before us and with us as we share these moments in marriage. And may these moments be growth opportunities that make us stronger and that help us to love deeper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you were encouraged by this episode. And if you were, would you share about it on Instagram and and tag at Marriage After God so we can see it? We love seeing people post about the episode. It also lets other people know about the episodes. And one last thing, if you haven't yet, would you leave a star rating today? And uh, that helps people on the podcast apps find the podcast as well. And so we love you. We're praying for your marriage and uh, we'll see you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 